good afternoon or evening as the case might be i hope you guys can hear me on the call um yeah i think i have started sharing my screen so uh, good afternoon hold on so good afternoon so this is welcome to today's uh, edition of the webinar series on applied analytics success stories uh, this is an initiative of the informs practice section and uh, my name is rajesh tiagi and i'm the organizer uh, for this webinar series so uh, before we get started, uh, just a minute or so on, on this practice section. So the purpose of this section is to advance the practice of analytics, operations, research, and management science. Uh, so to that event, we have a number of activities and events that take place. So we have the three annual competitions that some of you might be familiar with. We have the Franz Edelman Award, the Dan Wagner, Daniel Wagner Prize, and the UPS George D. Smith Award. We also have three monthly events. So one is this particular series, the Applied Analytics Success Stories, which, which usually focuses on specific applications um, that people have uh, implemented. Um, and, and so this is once, once which is typically takes place on alternate months. We have a kind of a parallel webinar series, which is called Sustaining Outstanding Analytics Organization. Um, this, is, this is more about how the analytics organizations are set up, um, uh, what kind of skill set they have, what kind of projects they have, um, essentially talks a little bit about that. We also have a monthly virtual networking happy hour. Uh, the topic varies. Um, but this is typically held on the last Friday of every month. In addition to that, we also have a couple of conference events. So we have the practice session track, which is offered during the fall annual fall meeting. Um, uh, and in addition, we have a couple of newsletters which go out before uh, each of the two uh, annual conferences. So again, uh, we hope you you like these webinars and all the competitions uh, that we, we sponsor. Uh, if you want to learn a little bit more about those, uh, check out our website uh, for the informs practice section. And, and definitely we hope that you will become, join uh, the practice section, become a member. It's, a, it's really a great opportunity to network with some of the very uh, seasoned uh, professionals. And especially if you want to, um, uh, help facilitate some of these monthly events. We are looking for uh, some of the younger folks um, uh, to help us with that because they bring a very different perspective. Uh, and we also get to know what exactly they are looking for in some of these uh, webinar series. On to um, the presentation itself. So the title for today's presentation is Optimizing Population Management in Correctional Systems. Um, we have three speakers. We have uh, uh, Muhammad Shahab Sapa, we have uh, Tamas Tarlaki, and we have Anshul Sharma. They are all affiliated with Optamo, and in one case with Lehigh University as well. And before I hand it over to the uh, speakers to introduce themselves and talk about um, and start their webinar, I just want to make a point that uh, during the talk, you will not be able to ask any questions, but we will have a Q&A session at the end of the webinar. You should see a Q&A button uh, on your screen and you should be able to click there. And as, as the presentation is going on, feel free. In fact, I will encourage, strongly encourage that, uh, that you type in any questions in the Q&A section and then um, the presenters will have access to those questions and will be able to um, answer those questions. And typically in previous webinars, we are able to um, make all the uh, we are we are we are, a, we are able to enable all the uh, participants uh, from to, to being able to ask questions directly by speaking up. But I am uh, not very familiar with this app. The staff that usually handles this is is uh, not there today, so I'm not too sure I'll be able to uh, change that. So I strongly suggest please type in your questions. That might be the only way. Uh, you might be able to um, have your question answered. So with that, uh, let me hand, uh, hand over to, uh, I think, Mohammed. Mohammed, if you want to take over and perhaps 
you and your uh, colleague can introduce themselves and then you can continue with the presentation. Sure. Thank you very much, uh, Rajesh, for the, for the introduction. Uh, so I'm going to share a screen now with the presentation. Okay, so uh, let's start with a brief introduction of ourselves. I hand it over to Dr. Chalaki and I'll take it from there. Okay, so uh, <clears throat> thanks for the invitation. It's a, a great pleasure to present our work. Um, my name is Tomasz Chalaki. So I'm uh, an endo chair of the University uh, with uh, it's a long experience in uh, optimization operations research and uh, in many, many, many applications in different industries. Uh, I'm also the president of uh, Optimo, uh, the company that we funded four years ago uh, in uh, uh, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. Uh, Mohamed Shafshafa, who is the chief executive officer of the company, uh, he was my PhD student. He's participating in this project, which was originally a university uh, research project uh, by now for about 10 years. And uh, uh, Anshu Sharma is our chief technology officer, uh, also uh, with Mohammed and myself, the co-founder of uh, Optimo. Uh, he's our uh, chief technology officer, and he was also a master's student at Lehigh University, started to work on optimizing uh, population management in uh, correctional systems uh, uh, in the student time. Uh, <clears throat> please go to the next page. Uh, so the Optimo is a unique uh, company. Uh, the only company who is using advanced analytics optimization, uh, advanced operations research uh, methodologies to optimize population management in the correctional systems. Uh, as mentioned, it's a spin off company uh, based on the university research, uh, headquartered in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania, in the Ben Franklin Technology uh, Center, which is also uh, uh, housed on the Lehigh University campus, but it's an incubator facility of Pennsylvania government. It's a great facility to work with. Uh, we are the only company who is focusing on correctional uh, systems, correctional uh, systems decision support, optimizing their decision processes, uh, optimizing inmate facility assignments, uh, uh, considering special housing units, uh, optimizing inmate transportation processes, um, and also uh, optimizing uh, inmate uh, rehabilitation program scheduling. Uh, there's no other company um, in the work which uh, uh, has this expertise and specializing uh, on this market. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, based starting with university research, we are working on this project uh, and expanding its scope uh, every year uh, for about 10 years. Uh, at this point, we are having uh, three uh, customers who are working with and uh, implementing our solutions. Uh, Pennsylvania, the Pennsylvania Department of Correction, uh, the Georgia Department of Correction, and uh, uh, the Tennessee Department of Correction. Uh, please, next page. Uh, our work, uh, as mentioned, it's unique. Uh, it's unprecedented uh, that operations research and advanced analytics technologies are utilized in correctional systems. Uh, uh, Methodology-wise, it's similar to like airline crew scheduling and uh, the, many other logistics and other industries, but the, the uh, constraints and everything is very different, as Mohamed will explain to it. Uh, our work as, as a unique was uh, uh, recognized in many places. We got uh, invited to the Pennsylvania House and Senate uh, in both uh, got the uh, really high recognition for the contribution of the, uh, the Commonwealth, uh, saving millions of dollars uh, for the uh, Commonwealth. Uh, by Inforce, we uh, received in 2017 the Daniel H. Wagner Prize. Uh, <clears throat> was a great uh, experience, obviously great recognition. Um, and then in 19, uh, the Industry Institute of Industrial Systems Engineers Outstanding Innovation in Service Systems Engineering Award. That was the inaugural uh, award of, uh, uh, that was the year when also the award was uh, funded. Um, next page, please. Uh, so the solution is uh, based on optimizing the population management, um, and uh, there are many activities here. And as I said, it's expanding. Uh, first is the facility assignment, so where and how to assign optimally uh, inmates to the, the different correctional facilities, uh, how to optimize uh, the transportation of uh, inmates between the facilities, 
Uh, obviously, that these two are closely interacting and overlapping, uh, and uh, the interaction of Mohammed will explain in the next half an hour or so. Uh, in the assignment, uh, you have to take into account the rehabilitation program needs, so the possible and uh, necessary optimal scheduling of the rehabilitation programs need to be considered. Uh, developing a new solution for mental health service scheduling uh, of uh, inmates. And as you can imagine, uh, inmates are having a lot of mental health problems and uh, mandated the rehabilitation programs and services by the judges and the, the correctional systems. And then uh, the, the correctional systems are built on different juridical system, different historical build up, different facilities, like special housing is a, a major uh, difference between the Pennsylvania and uh, uh, Georgia system. Uh, so with all of that, I think the next page, uh, we can go on there and uh, I pass the word over to Mohamed. Sure. Thank you, Dr. Shalaki. Uh, and so in this presentation, uh, we're going to focus on the two uh, use cases of optimizing uh, population management in correctional systems. First, uh, we'll start explaining about the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections and then we'll go over uh, our experience at the Georgia Department of Corrections. In Pennsylvania, we'll explain about the inmate assignment problem, the rules and criteria of the assignment. Then we'll go over uh, our implementation experience, and then we'll talk about the benefits and impact of optimizing inmate assignments at the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. Uh, and then uh, we'll uh, briefly talk about the Georgia Department of Corrections and the benefits and impact of optimizing inmate assignments for the department. Starting with the Pennsylvania and, uh, and the inmate assignment problem. Uh, so in Pennsylvania, they have uh, 25 facilities. And the decisions about the assignment of inmates to one of the 25 facilities uh, are all made by uh, the Office of Population Management. It's like an office within the central office of the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. Uh, usually, in the, so they have uh, different types of transfers for inmates. Uh, probably the most important is what they call initial assignments. All the new intakes, all the uh, inmates that are brought to the system uh, are first housed at the Camp Hill, which is uh, circled here uh, in the map, and, uh, and they are basically classified. All the information that is needed for their assignment is obtained within like a few weeks. And uh, once they are ready to be assigned, then the Office of Population Management uh, decides about where to house. Overall, they have about 250 initial assignments uh, like on a weekly basis. And, uh, and then on top of that, they have over 80 different reasons for the transfer of inmates after the initial assignment. Considering all the inmate uh, transfers, they have about 650 on average uh, on a weekly basis. Here we have a short video from uh, the then Secretary of Corrections, John Wetzel, and the then Director of the Office of Population Management, Bill Nicklo, explaining about the inmate assignment problem in Pennsylvania. And uh, let me know if you, if I guess I need to stop share and share the sound so that you can hear it. I think we are good. Okay, just uh, let me know if you cannot hear it. Pennsylvania Department of Corrections is comprised of 25 prisons that hold 48,000 inmates uh, and employ 15,000 staff. There's literally not a place in Pennsylvania where you're more than an hour and a half away from one of our state prisons. Uh, it has a budget of $2.5 billion, and it's the third highest line item in state government. Keep in mind that when you talk about 48,000 inmates into uh, 25 prisons, uh, you have to make decisions that who's housed where and with who. Putting people at a place where they can get the programs they need to uh, get out is a critical piece of it. But probably the most critical piece is security. Um, we have gang members. We have um, younger inmates who tend to be more violent. And when those numbers get out of balance, uh, we have major problems in our facilities from 
uh, assaults to drugs. Um, so populate, population management is everything, not to mention the cost of moving um, inmates around the system and, and trying to meet some of our rehabilitation goals like uh, a prison closer to their home, the closer they get to going home. So population management is a very key part of what we do. And prior to the, the Lehigh uh, inmate assignment decision support system, uh, OPM was, it was a very cumbersome process uh, involving, uh, we receive about 50,000 petitions which are requests to transfer an inmate for uh, any number of reasons uh, annually. And an office of, of seven staff had to review each one of those petitions um, and determine the appropriate placement based on programmatic needs, medical concerns, uh, security of, of the inmate in, in the facility where we would, we would place the inmate. Um, and, and a number of other factors that are taken into consideration, a including bed availability at the facilities. And as, you can, as you can understand, it becomes very, very uh, cumbersome for a group of people to do manually. And it really was pen and paper and, and uh, hash marks on paper when you move someone, and it was a sequential process, meaning that if there were 200 inmates that we had to make a decision on where we would place them, you, you looked at the first individual and you made the most appropriate decision based on all the resources that were available for that individual. And then when you got to the 100th individual, all those previous resources are gone. So now you're not necessarily making the best decision for that individual. It all started with a phone call. That's someone quoting from the prison. Lehigh professor Tomas Terlaki, known in the world of optimization for solving problems, was sought out by the Department of Corrections because it was having a problem of its own. Okay, great. So, uh, in the next few slides, I'm going to explain about how they used to make uh, assignment decisions and uh, two main uh, characteristics of like the way they made the decisions. Number one, the decisions were made manually. Number two, sequential. Uh, there are numerous rules and policies that must be taken into account when assigning inmates to facilities and different uh, captains and different officers have uh, used to have different interpretations of the same rules and policies. So uh, the process uh, was uh, sort of subjective. And of course, it was time consuming and uh, prone to human error. As a result of all of that, uh, one could say that it was like costly and not efficient for the department. Uh, and as I said, they used to make decisions sequentially, meaning like, let's say in this example, they have like 100 inmates. They start with the first, second, and third, and uh, they make good assignments for those inmates because they have all the resources available for them. By the time they get to inmate number 80, 90, or 100, most of the resources are gone. So it means that appear at the bottom of the list are not going to get uh, good assignments. As you might be able to see, sequential decision making lacks the capability uh, to basically to, ch to check the needs of the upcoming inmates, and as a result, fails to properly allocate resources to the inmates. And uh, it highly depends on the order in which inmates are assigned. Uh, by changing the order of assignment, the quality of the decisions can change significantly. And one can make an argument that it's not fair for inmates. Inmates that appear at the bottom of the list for assignment are not going to get, uh, uh, get assigned to good facilities. As opposed to sequential assignment, we have the notion of simultaneous assignment, where the needs of all the inmates, the resources that are available at the facilities, at all the facilities, everything is taken into account. And then decisions about about the assignment of inmates is made uh, simultaneously. And uh, this is what uh, is incorporated in all our solutions. And that only can be achieved by using uh, mathematical optimization. So here we have on a very high level, the rules and criteria of the assignment in Pennsylvania, starting from what we call general assignment factors, uh, the sentence information of uh, inmates uh, affect their assignment, the cost of the level of the inmates, mental and medical information, physical limitations if they have any, uh, rehabilitative programs and their availability at the facilities. These are all examples of the general assignment factors. On top of that, the treatment programs and the waiting time to store the treatment programs. And I'll explain that in more detail uh, in, 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 the, uh, in one of the slides. 
Uh, next, we have the bed availability. Of course, they don't want to uh, overassign inmates to facilities, uh, and they at the same time they don't want to uh, have like facilities which are uh, too underpopulated. And last but not least, the distance of inmates to home. Uh, in Pennsylvania, they want to assign inmates closer to home so as to facilitate visits from their family. Uh, and overall, uh, this problem, the assignment problem, is uh, multi-objective. Number one, uh, the goal is to minimize the violation of the so-called general assignment factors. Uh, then we have uh, the program waiting times. And uh, we want to minimize program waiting times for inmates. At the same time, we want to minimize the program waiting lists at the facilities. And uh, by uh, and we also want to reduce future inmate transportation. And ultimately, the goal is to reduce inmate population. Uh, in this slide, we have like uh, an example of the of the assignment factors that we uh, have identified in Pennsylvania. They have about like uh, over 60 assignment factors. And uh, as you can see in this table, uh, it's like a matrix of factors versus facilities. And it's not only zero one, it can have values in between as well. And uh, the goal is uh, basically to make sure these, uh, uh, these assignment factors are satisfying. And if it's not possible to satisfy all of them, then to minimize the violation of the assignment factors. And these are what we call basic assignment factors. We also have derived assignment factors, meaning like if an inmate satisfies two or three of them at the same time, that could, uh, that could affect their decisions. And uh, those are the things that also need to be taken into account. Uh, next, we have the available beds. So each facility has, uh, has its own available beds. And then uh, based on the number of beds they have available for assignment, we, uh, we calculate the minimum and maximum allowed number of assignments. And, uh, and, there, and the goal is to kind of stay in that range. And on top of that, uh, we want the assignments to be proportional to the available beds. On top of the what we call regular available bed consideration, we have swaps, meaning like to assign inmates to facilities without taking any extra beds. And that's applicable when uh, we assign inmates to what we call specialized beds, beds that are uh, limited and, uh, and uh, meaning that they are at, the, at their capacity and they don't wanna take any extra beds. So what they do is they move one inmate out and they want to assign another inmate instead of that. Uh, the next, uh, probably the most complicating uh, assignment rule is the consideration of the treatment programs. So explaining a little bit about uh, corrections in Pennsylvania. So in, inmates can have like uh, a minimum and a maximum sentence time. And uh, they will anyway be released at their maximum release stage but they can also uh, be released on their minimum sentence state if they are eligible for parole. And one of the conditions for becoming eligible uh, for parole is to go and to finish all the treatment programs by their minimum sentence state. So, uh, and in Pennsylvania, in order to be on a safe side, they have added a buffer. So they ideally, they want inmates to finish all their programs four months before their minimum sentence date. Otherwise, they won't be able to go on parole. And uh, now here, the goal of, of assignment is to assign them to facilities where they can get into all their treatment programs as soon as possible. Uh, and that's sort of like an inmate oriented objective. At the same time, you want to balance out the waiting lists of the programs at the facilities. And that's more like a facility uh, oriented objective. And this is uh, this complicates the problem significantly because it adds a scheduling component uh, to the assignment problem. And last but not least, as I mentioned earlier, uh, in Pennsylvania, they want to assign inmates close, closer to their home. Let's say 
uh, if uh, an inmate is from Lehigh County, which is like dotted blue here, uh, it, then the goal is to assign the inmate as close as possible. Very well. So this is a high level flow diagram of IADSS. Uh, it is a, a web uh, based solution and uh, it fetches all the data from our client's database and uh, writes the recommendations back. And then the core of the system is the optimization module, where all the business rules and criteria of the assignment are, uh, and also the inmate information and facility information, everything is fed to this uh, larger scale mathematical optimization model. And uh, by solving that model, we provide uh, recommendations for the simultaneous assignment of inmates to facilities. Okay, so uh, the, uh, the, sys the assignment system has been used by the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections since September of 2016. Here again, we have a short video uh, from the uh, PADOC secretary and the uh, director of the Office of Population Management explaining about the benefits and impact of the assignment system at the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. What the Lehigh model does, it allows OPM to make those decisions simultaneously. So any group of inmates, whether it's 100 inmates or 1,000 inmates that we have to make a decision on placement for, it makes the best decision for the department at that point in time, uh, looking at all of those factors. At its very foundation, uh, the inmate assignment decision support system is a productivity enhancement tool. So it, it allows OPM to work and operate more efficiently. Um, and when we're looking at inmates assignments, it, it takes into consideration uh, a multitude of factors that would have been virtually impossible for, for humans to do alone, uh, including program waiting times. Uh, and it decreases the amount of time uh, that an inmate waits to start programming. It also takes into consideration security concerns, such as gang-related security concerns, uh, inmate demographics, which can significantly reduce uh, assaults within our prison on our staff and our other inmates, and it overall increase our security in our facilities and public safety. So previously it took uh, OPM, the Office of Population Management, uh, 40 staff hours per person, seven people in the office, to evaluate and review the petitions and determine the appropriate placement uh, to the best that they could with the tools that they had. Now, with the inmate assignment tool, the inmate assignment decision support system, you can literally click a button and within uh, 30 seconds to a minute, all those decisions are made simultaneously. So it's, it's a tremendous productivity enhancement tool just for the office. So now the staff in OPM can evaluate things that they weren't previously able to do because of, of the time that they had to spend just reviewing the petition. Um, we've mapped out the entire process, the, the why do we make a decision for, for every possible factor. And the model takes all that into consideration and makes a simultaneous decision based on that. Yeah, this inmate assignment decision support system that was built by uh, Lehigh University has really been a godsend. Uh, and, and again, keep in mind that, uh, that one of our key goals is making preparing inmates to be successful for parole. The key, the key piece of that is that they complete programming. So making sure our program seats are full and making sure um, we have inmates completing their program by the time they're eligible for parole is a critical piece. This tool has really uh, allowed us to improve that and also um, allowed us to, to not increase staff in, in the department that supports it. So parole rate, uh, for one, um, with people completing programming at a higher rate by the time they're eligible for parole, that increases the parole rate. Also. Um, the reduction in transports, um, and, and keep in mind, that's not just a cost savings, but that's a savings from a security standpoint, because transports are some of our riskiest things that we do. And also, you can make an argument that it has had some impact on us reducing violence by making better decisions as, as it relates to especially uh, gang members and younger inmates who are more likely to be violent. So, so we've saved money in all those areas. It's been uh, a pretty significant uh, success for us and for the taxpayers of Pennsylvania to the tune of about 2.9 million in the first year. And we're projecting uh, closer to 20 million over the, the next five years. Great, okay. So here we have the four 
main areas of saving for the Department of Corrections. Uh, as it was mentioned in the video, uh, this assignment system has enabled them to reduce program waiting times by about 40% for inmates who need to be enrolled in their programs immediately. And it has helped them to reduce uh, transfers by about 10% in the first year of implementation and by 35% in the third year. Uh, it has uh, enabled them to reduce assaults by considering all the demographic information, all the separations, uh, gang related data. It has helped them to reduce assaults uh, within prisons. And last but not least, it has enabled them to reduce the staff hour that is needed for processing. Uh, transfer requests. Uh, overall, uh, they've been able to save about uh, $2.9 million in the first year of implementation, and they projected uh, about $19 million over five years. And uh, it's worth mentioning that we sort of overperformed, meaning like the saving they reported over five years uh, is uh, less than the actual amount of saving. For example, uh, the transportation, they, ex uh, they projected the transportation to reduce by 10%, but in fact, their transportation uh, was reduced by about 35%. So the actual saving over five years has been even more than uh, this amount. And uh, it's again, another aspect which is worth talking about is that the saving here has been over like fivefold of their investment on, on the project. Okay, so, so far we've gone over the Pennsylvania Department of Corrections. Next, I'm going to talk about the Georgia Department of Corrections and the benefits and impact of the system for the department. Uh, now, here in this slide, I wanna explain a little bit about the difference between Pennsylvania and Georgia Department of Corrections. In Pennsylvania, they have about 34,000 inmates. In Georgia, they have about 46,000 inmates. It's about like 35% more. They have 24 facilities in Pennsylvania. In Georgia, they have 72 facilities. A lot more, but a bit smaller number of inmates. And that makes the problem more difficult because we have a lot more choices. Uh, in Pennsylvania, on average, they process about 650 transfer requests per week. In Georgia, they process about 1,000 transfer requests. And uh, in Pennsylvania, we identified about uh, like 60 assignment factors. In Georgia, uh, we identified like about 240 different assignment factors. And uh, that again shows the complexity of decision making in Georgia. Uh, another aspect which is like interesting is that like in Pennsylvania, they uh, wanted the scheduling component to be incorporated in the system, meaning they wanted to minimize program waiting times for inmates. But in Georgia, uh, that was not a, cri a criterion for assignment. So uh, in that sense, the Pennsylvania model is more complex than the Georgia model. And just to give you a sense of like the size of the model in Pennsylvania, on average, the models have about 250,000 constraints and over 100,000 variables. In Georgia, uh, they solve models with about 700,000 constraints and over 200,000 variables. And the beauty of this is that they know nothing about operations research, yet they take advantage of of, of operations research and mathematical optimization on a daily basis. Very well. So in the next two or three slides, I'm going to explain about how the system has helped the Georgia Department of Corrections. And these are all preliminary studies. So they have county camps in Georgia. Those are like specialized housings. And they want to keep the, uh, those uh, facilities full. Uh, but as you might be able to see in this graph, the vacancies uh, back in uh, early 2021 was high, was like closer to 1600. And July 15, the red uh, vertical line is when the system went live and was used for assigning inmates to county camp. As you might be able to see, uh, the uh, vacancies uh, was like went down quite fast in less than five months. It went uh, to about 200. And uh, that has helped them to save a lot of money. So in Georgia, keeping an inmate in a county camp 
will cost the department about 20 bucks per day. And keeping an inmate in a state prison costs the department about $65. So the difference is $45. Now, by considering the difference in the vacancy going from 1600 to 400, uh, and then considering the difference in uh, keeping them uh, in a in a county camp in a county camp facility versus a state prison, you can uh, the department has been able to save twenty million dollar annually. And we had the same experience with another specialized housing unit called work release, uh, and uh, they also struggled to fill those specialized housing units with the assignment system. They were able to reduce the vacancies to almost zero. And that all uh, translates to over $3 million savings per year. Overall, the system has, been, uh, has enabled the Georgia Department of Corrections to save uh, uh, closer to $25 million per year. That's again, like uh, five times more, even more than five times more the, than the investment of the Georgia Department of Corrections on developing a facility assignment system. Okay, so with this, I'm going to uh, turn it over to Anshul for a high level demo of, of the assignment system. Anshul. Great, thank you, Mohammed. Uh... So I'm going to share my screen and uh, we'll go over a quick demo of the, assign the inmate assignment decision support system as it is implemented in Georgia Department of Corrections. So as you can see, we have uh, designed a user interface, which is, uh, which is very user-friendly and very easy to use. And uh, so basically this is the main page uh, of the application. Here you can just uh, input your um, username and password. And of course, this is from a perspective of the correctional officer who is making these assignment decision on a daily basis, as Mohammed mentioned. So from here, you can simply uh, log in to the application. And uh, while you're entering in, into the system, you can see that this is the main landing page. Here we have two main modules um, implemented for the Georgia Department of Corrections. One is the specialized housing module. Another one is the facility assignment. The specialized housing module basically helps the GDC folks uh, find inmates who are eligible for various specialized housing units. County camps and work release for the two examples which Muhammad gave. Uh, they, those are the two uh, specialized housing units in, in, a, in a list of 20 specialized housing units where we give the ability to the user to, to browse through the eligible inmates for all those specialized housing units. Um, work details are, is also another example where the inmates usually go and spend time outside of the fence. And hence, there is a criteria which is very restrictive. And uh, we need to find out uh, the eligible inmates who can potentially go out and who are not a great security risk in general. Uh, there's a bunch of criteria attached to that. And that's basically uh, what, what, what this particular module does. So if I click on this, you can see the different specialized housing in it. To give you an example, I'm just going to select the ones that are county camp uh, eligible, and then you just simply click on this button, find inmates. After waiting for a few seconds, you can view that in this particular data set. And again, data set that you're viewing in this, in this demonstration is only created for the demonstration purposes. All of these folks that you see here are kind of fictional characters. They're, they've kind of created those names out of Game of Thrones characters. But, but anyways, uh, with that, in this particular data set, you can see that there are 1,100 inmates who are potentially eligible for a county camp. And uh, these are those different inmates. And then the user can simply click on these inmates and then can verify the information and then make a decision as to yes, if that inmate is eligible or not for that specialized housing. With that, I will go back to the, the landing page and um, we'll, we'll discuss the, I'll give you the demonstration of the facility assignment, which is the core of the inmate assignment decision system, which utilizes the mathematical model uh, that Mohammed was just, talk, was just talking about. With this, I'll click on the facility assignment. And uh, here, this particular page is what we call as the browse inmates page. In this, in this particular data set, we have 2,500 inmates who have a request for a transfer to be assigned to a facility. Uh, meaning that all of these 2,500 inmates uh, uh, need to be assigned to, uh, to another facility for 
for a set of given uh, reasons. And these reasons can be anything from that of if the inmate is, is coming into the Georgia Department of Corrections for the very first time, then, uh, then he has to go through a, a process called the diagnostics. Once he's finished with the diagnostics process, then at that time, the initial transfer request has been created, which is a type of computer diagnosis. Um, there can be other transfer requests like that of the placement to a specialized housing unit. So for instance, when we make sure that the inmates who are eligible for uh, county camps, for instance, need to be assigned to a county camp, that they can be put into a transfer request of county camps and then further be assigned to the county camps utilizing the, uh, the novel mathematical model. So with that, this is the browse page. Here we have 2,500 inmates. If you click on any of these inmates, you can view more information for that for this particular individual. This guy has a computer diagnostics request, meaning he has entered the GDC system for the first time, and he's finished with his diagnostics, and he's now waiting to be assigned to a facility for the very first time. Uh, he is in process, his request date, and all the necessary information associated with this request, all the general information associated with this inmate, this inmate is a medium security level. Uh, he has uh, a maximum sentence of 2026 until the fifth month of 2026. And then all these assignment factors apply to him. These are all those assignment factors which Mohammed mentioned uh, we, we've incorporated in, in Georgia Department of Corrections. Over 240 factors are, are considered at the, at the GDC. Um, and this these are the set of assignment factors which apply to this particular individual which I've selected. So from here, from the browse page, uh, in order to make these simultaneous assignment decisions, a uh, user has to do two things. One, he needs to set or she needs to set the input parameters. And the second is to select a set of inmates that they want to assign in a given particular run. Now we can set the input parameters by just clicking on the input parameters button. From here, you can set the facility bed vacancies. And when I click on bed reports, you have to first select the transportation date, meaning the transportation date that they are going to assign inmates to be transported at. And it's by default the next weekday, since today is Friday, the next transportation date is going to be Monday, the 22nd. And then the user can click on generating the bed reports. When we're generating the bed reports, we just give a vacancies uh, at each of those 70 facilities that that the GDC uh, assigns in the 72 facilities that the GDC assigns in this. You can also set and modify the uh, the uh, the various uh, assignment factors and but again since I just wanted to keep it brief we'll just skip that for now but again the user can set the input factor. So that's the first step. The second step is to select a set of Inmates that they want to assign, or that the user wants to assign at, at any given transportation day. They might not want to assign 2,500 inmates due to transportation uh, restrictions. So, this is why we've given them an ability to set a smaller set of subset. And we have this flexible filter framework to uh, which, which can be utilized to set a, a set of inmates. So, for this demonstration purpose, what I'll do is I'll just click on, I'll just find the inmates or to select the inmates who are finished with their diagnostics and who have a pending review type of request status and who are assignment eligible. With this, after doing two main steps, that is setting the input parameters and then setting the set of inmates, all the user has to do is click on the simultaneous assign, do simultaneous assign. At this point of time, uh, the, the mathematical model is, is generated and it's been solved. And uh, close to 700,000 constraints and 200,000 variables uh, are incorporated in the mathematical model. And then it's, it's going to give you a uh, result for an assignment for all the seven, 755 inmates who need to be assigned. Depending on the complexity of the problem, it may take anywhere from 30 seconds to two minutes. To, to get this result, this took less than that. Uh, and here, for in the middle section, you can see that for each inmate, we have one facility recommend. And again, some of these inmates are not assigned to a facility because of the bed vacancy restrictions. Of course, they might not have 750 bed uh, 
beds open uh, in this in this particular mock data set that we have created. So with this, what I'll do is using those filters, I'll just uh, select the ones who have gotten an assignment. And um, for each element, we have, we're recommending one facility. And uh, after clicking on one of these inverts, you can view more information associated with this individual. And if the user finds the yes, this particular assignment recommendation for this guy to central SP is good and it's fine, then at that moment, they can just simply click on the assign button and then that image is assigned to the central state prison. Similarly, you can just keep on moving to the next guy and then keep on making the assignment um, decisions to this, to this list of recommendations. On top of this, uh, we also provide a rank order. So for instance, for any reason, if this inmate and this recommendation is not good and a user wants to make an override, what we provide is we provide a rank order of all the facilities which that inmate could go to based on all the different assignment factors that apply to it. And that is what we call as a single assignment. So what you see here at the right, corner is basically the single assignment where we have listed all the facilities that that can go uh, based on those different assignment factors. And if a user wants to change the assignment and select on a different facility, write the um, override reason, and then make an override uh, decision and then assign him to a different facility. And with this, uh, I will conclude the, the, the demonstration if you have any questions. And yes, also at the same time, uh, our application has uh, the facility vacancies here. So these are live facility vacancies, which the user can also view while making the assignment decisions. So as to make sure that they're doing the appropriate assignment, uh, taking the appropriate assignment decisions and not overbooking facilities. Although all of that is considered in the assignment, in the simultaneous assignment decisions. But if they are making an override, then that can also be kept, uh, that can also be checked through this application there. Mohammed, you're on mute. Yes. And then I just to add one more thing to this. So on this right hand side of the page, you see the single assignment, all the facilities listed. In order to provide that list, we solve a series of optimization problems only with one individual. And then based on the result, and that's that's the same optimization model that is developed, but is run only for one inmate. And based on the results of those optimization problems that are solved, we provide the rank order of the facilities. So with that, uh, I'm going to kind of uh, stop here and open it for questions and answers. Uh, thanks, Mohammed. I think there is one question there uh, already, and I'm going to um, unmute uh, the folks in the audience. Hey, Mohammed, uh, can you hear me? Yes, I do. This is Indajit Singh. Uh, great work. Um, really liked uh, what you have presented. So I was looking at the other side of the optimization. You mentioned that there are factors uh, that are taken into consideration, what factors are available at different facilities. So is there any work or extension you are planning where you can propose and look at the other side that these are the factors that should be developed at these facilities that will have a greatest impact on the KPIs that we are trying to, to optimize? So that's a, that's a good question. And we, we always provide recommendations on, uh, on what to incorporate, what to take into account as like an assignment factor. But at the end of the day, it's all uh, up to the jurisdiction because they have their own policies and okay. they have their own uh, rules that must be satisfied. So most of it comes from the department, but we also help map it out. We also help... Uh, formalize the process, make it consistent. Like in Pennsylvania, they at the beginning of the project, they identified over 100 different assignment factors. But mm -hmm. then after going through all the different assignment factors, we found out that note. So the, it actually 
uh, does not need to like have, include 100 different factors. We took it down to 60, to about 60 assignment factors. And, uh, and so, yes, uh, we help them refine the assignment factors that uh, they might have like in different places, part of it in the uh, in their policies, part of it in the minds of the folks who make decisions and so forth. Sure, thank you. Sure. Um, I think Luis Montiel has a question. Hi, hello there. Uh, yeah, I, I was wondering because in banking systems is, is now a very a spread the use of uh, artificial intelligent networks to define the behavior of an individual, right? Uh, let's say, for example, in terms of credit, there is a very usable uh, tools to define if someone is credit worthy or not. And that is a big, a big field in, in FinTech. But uh, how open is the people in, in correct, correctional systems to have this kind of environment? Because it, it's, it's very tricky in the sense that you're deciding over the life of a person. So if you could implement systems of artificial intelligence that can help to define if someone is perhaps a, you know, a, a good person to go into, into uh, at the next level of the next stage. For example, you have this with the level of, of courses of the completion of different courses, right? So uh, how, how open is the people for this kind of system? Yes, that, that's a very good question. So, uh... No, so as you as you rightfully said, it's about human lives. These decisions are like affect human lives, and there is no room for error. And that's one of the reasons that we do we did not use predictive analytics because with predictive analytics there is always error, false positive, false negative, and other things. Now what we use is mathematical optimization, and all the rules and criteria of the assignment are deterministic and are finally approved by the department. And what the model does is to make sure that all the rules and criteria of the assignment are satisfied. And that would help basically to minimize the risk of uh, like going off of the policies. And that would help with the, that in fact has helped Pennsylvania to reduce uh, assaults and violence within prisons. So it, what you're saying basically is that they are open for certain kinds of systems, the ones that use optimization to comply with rules, basically, right? Uh, can, but, can you please say that again? I didn't quite get like... Yeah, yeah, that you're saying that they are open until, until some point, for example, for optimization processes, they, they are happy with it, they, they accept it. Yes, yes, so uh, yes, so you are talking, yes, and that has been the case consistently in Pennsylvania. We measure what we call acceptance rate of our recommendations in Pennsylvania. Over 90% of the time, they have accepted our recommendation and the what we call overrides. The overrides have been mostly made because of the temporary factors, which are not worth being added to the system or because of data inconsistencies. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, anyone else with any question? I see a question from Stephen uh, asking about the federal government. Uh, so we we have been in contact with the Federal Bureau of Prisons, but at this point we have not done anything uh, to help them with optimizing assignment of inmates to facilities. But that's definitely an area which can benefit a lot from improving in in the assignments. Okay. Anyone else? For a second, Benjamin Wong had a hands up. Yeah. Uh, hi. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. So what programming language and software did you use to develop the optimization model? Because I noticed the size of the model uh, has, uh, has like more than 250K constraints and 100K variables. How did you handle this large uh, number of constraints and variables? Yeah, so we used uh, Groby and Cplex as our optimization in team. 
depending on the client, the type of the problem, we decide on like one of the two. And, uh, and uh, we use Python to process mostly Python uh, to develop the model and then to kind of solve uh, and, and feed it to the, to the engine. Um, is there any challenge uh, when you develop this optimization model? Yes, in Pennsylvania, we had like at the beginning, the model, like it took the solver about like an hour to solve the model. So we, have, we went through multiple rounds of refining the model. At the end of the day, we were able to reduce the solution time to less than 20 minutes for Pennsylvania. Now in Georgia, uh, the solution times are very well, as Anshul mentioned, usually it's within a few minutes. So it is, uh, it is acceptable. And they run the system uh, like uh, once a day. So it is acceptable for them to wait for like 10 to 20 minutes to get the results. And it's actually our recommendation for them to wait and all, assign all the inmates at once, meaning not to run the system with smaller subsets because that beats the purpose. And that's why they use the system like our recommendation is to use it once a week, but they, because of the number of inmates, they cannot do that. They, like in Georgia, they run it like twice a week and they usually wait for a few minutes and get the results back. I see, thank you. Sure. Uh, I have a follow-up question on the same theme. So as you were developing the system, um, did you know in the beginning itself that, you know, as you come to know of different constraints, operational constraints and so on, that you will be able to handle them with a mathematical model and you wouldn't have to go to some sort of a heuristic? What was the thought process, I guess, on that? that that's a great question, I guess. Dr. Chalakli can also help answer that question. So, so far, we, we've been able to handle all the constraints, all the business rules and criteria of assignment in the optimization model. Now, uh, and this has been like implemented in Pennsylvania and in Georgia. And uh, now, I don't know about like another jurisdiction. Uh, they, so far, everything has been like handled through solving a mixed integer linear optimization model. We might need to explore, say, mixed integer quadratic models in other jurisdictions, depending on the complexity of the decisions that are being made. Uh, but, uh, but luckily so far, mixed integer linear optimization has been powerful enough to address all their needs. I might add to it that uh, the short, short answer in one's way would be that no, it was not clear at the <laughs> beginning, uh, but we definitely uh, uh, aimed to use rigorous uh, exact optimization methodology. And uh, the very first models that we formulated that uh, were not solvable. So the uh, solution time was unacceptable and uh, not even get uh, close to uh, closing the reality gap. But uh, uh, went through a, a number of reformulation type of formulations of the model, uh, which helped a lot. Uh, there's a time uh, window in it uh, uh, because you are planning for no more than one day, more than one period, really how to heal, uh, deal, deal with it. And also uh, the problem, if you would formulate all of the constraints as hard constraints, then there is no, no feasible solution. So that says we got the multi-layer, uh, multi-objective optimization model when different uh, constraints are penalized with different levels according to the importance. So there's a lot of uh, it's a modeling work behind um, to get to the point that uh, this size of models are uh, really representing the problem accurately and in the same time solvable with the, the, this is the best software so in a very short time. Uh, and I might add that really going beyond uh, Gurobi and Cplex, uh, we trusted some of the other solvers too. None of the others can get uh, solving these problems in any time would be acceptable for the actual car clients. Okay. Okay. Um, time for one last question if one, anyone has one. Okay, so um, again, thank you very much, uh, Professor Thomas, Mohammed, and Anshul. Excellent presentation, really enjoyed it. Um, I'm sure the audience did as well. So uh, again, I wanna thank you and uh, 
um, have a good rest of the day. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.